Welcome to this Tutor to You sociology topic video looking at ethnicity and crime, focusing on reasons for differences in offending by ethnicity. In this series of videos, we've looked at a range of different theoretical explanations for crime, from functionalist and subcultural views through to feminist views of crime and deviance. But we also need to be able to apply those to the different social trends in crime statistics to offer explanations for why certain groups appear to be more criminal than others. And in this video, we're going to focus on the reasons for the overrepresentation of minority ethnic groups in crime statistics. To do this, we have to look at a range of different explanations, from the neo-Marxist views of Hall and Gilroy to the left realist explanations of Lee and Young. We'll also consider strain and subcultural theories, the role of institutional racism and interactionist theories. Now we've covered these in more detail in separate videos, but we're going to apply these theories to ethnicity and crime in this video. First of all, we'll review Hall et al's Policing the Crisis, and this is a really useful study to use when discussing ethnic differences in offending, as it looks at the role of the unequal structure of British society and media and police perceptions of the black community during the crisis of hegemony in the 1970s. To recap, Hall outlined the aggressive policing tactics responding to media stereotypes of the black community, outlining stop and search policies, which then mobilised bystanders into action. This was with a view to challenging the discrimination that they were witnessing, but in turn led to more negative stereotyping by the media, treating the black community as criminal, and this led to further police action. This ultimately culminated in the civil disorder seen in the early part of the 1980s with riots in London, Bristol and Liverpool. Another useful study is that of Gilroy and the myth of black criminality. Gilroy suggested that the idea that black people were more criminal was actually a myth, particularly when looking at self-report studies of criminality in different areas of the UK. There was no discernible difference between black and white criminality, but law enforcement was focused on black communities. This led to forms of political resistance against this perceived oppression, utilising tactics that had been passed down from colonial struggles in their ancestral homelands, Gilroy argued that in response, the police cracked down harder on black communities as a form of reasserting control, much as it occurred towards the end of colonial rule. Building on Marxist and interactionist ideas, left realism formed to be able to provide solutions for crime, perceiving it to be a real problem in society. Now, This can be applied to ethnic groups that are examining the different causes of crime according to Lee and Young marginalisation, deprivation and subcultures. Ethnic minorities in the 1980s were often marginalised through social and economic exclusion, suffering relative deprivation to their white peers and being unable to see themselves represented in the culture of British society. This was compounded by blocked opportunities in education, which led to the formation of subcultures in order to achieve some form of status in society, often through petty criminal activities. Furthermore, media representations of ethnic minority communities as being criminal or not wanting to integrate into mainstream society marginalise these groups further, leading to less opportunities and ultimately more criminal behaviours, particularly judged on the standards of the dominant group in society, the white middle class. We can also apply strain theories to ethnic minority crimes, in part due to the fact that some ethnic minority groups such as Pakistani and Black Caribbeans are overrepresented in measures of poverty, with 40% of ethnic minority households being below the poverty line compared to 20% for white households. This lack of resources leads to strain, but an inability to achieve through legitimate pathways leads to some people in these groups adopting deviant adaptations to strain such as innovation or retreatism in order to alleviate that strain or to achieve society's goals of wealth and power through alternative means. Looking at subcultural explanations, Gunter suggested that these blocked opportunities had led to the development of a road culture amongst young black males, seeking status from criminal activities and the development of bad boy personas. Similarly, both Cloward Nolan and Cohen's ideas of subcultural strain theories can be applied to those ethnic groups whose opportunities are blocked, with Cohen suggesting that subcultures form due to status frustration and Cloward Nolan suggesting different types of subculture depending upon location. Both theories can be applied to ethnic minority crime, 
particularly amongst young males who are routinely denied status through education. Another explanation for the overrepresentation of ethnic minorities, particularly black Caribbean and mixed ethnicity, white black Caribbean, is institutional racism. These groups are more likely to be stopped and searched, more likely to be arrested and more likely to be imprisoned. Evidence of institutional racism comes from both Waddington and Fielding, who describe the existence of a canteen culture of racial stereotyping and profiling of ethnic minority suspects. This leads to an increase in stop and search rates, with stop and search rates being nine times higher for black citizens in comparison to white ones. Finally, we can also apply interactionist theories to explain the differences in rates of offending. We can apply the concept of Cohen's moral panics and folk devils, with both black and Asian males being victims of negative media stereotypes associated with criminality in recent years. Furthermore, we can apply the ideas of Cicero, examining the negotiation of justice, with white middle-class suspects more likely to be able to use their position to negotiate cautions or warnings rather than being arrested. This is due to negative stereotypes that police hold regarding ethnic minority suspects, including black, mixed ethnicity and members of the traveller community. And finally, negative stereotyping in the media, with commonly used stereotypes of black and Asian males being drug dealers or carrying weapons such as knives. That concludes this Tutor to You sociology topic video looking at ethnicity and crime, focusing on the reasons for differences in offending by ethnicity. Thanks for watching.